What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here. Very exciting day today as the iPhone 12 lineup has been revealed and uh, it's pretty much what we expected as far as design, feature-wise. Now let's get into all the details and cover the differences between all the models from the 12 mini, 12, 12 Pro, and 12 Pro Max. It's a bit confusing this year. There's a lot that's different between the models, in particular between the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max. The 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max were very similar. So having a Halo model in the lineup Pretty interesting. Let's talk about all the features that are worth it, not worth it, and which device you should get. And don't forget, we are still running a 20% off promo on phone rebel cases, let you enjoy the feel of your iPhone while retaining durability. These uh, will directly help us fund Gen 2 and potentially might bring some MagSafe elements into this case. We'll be looking into them. Okay, let's get into those differences. Real quick, let's cover what's the same between all of these devices. For one, they all feature the same new slab design very reminiscent of the iPad Pro. All are 7.4 millimeters across the lineup, first ever. And all four models will support 5G. Here in America, they will support 5G millimeter wave. It's actually what that little cutout smart connector looking thing is on the side. In other countries where millimeter wave is not an option, that does not exist in the design. Now, all the models do have new wide cameras. So a new seven piece plastic element lens, which allows 27% more light inside with a 1.6 aperture. All models do support the new MagSafe connector system, which actually looks amazing. So the charger will now snap in on the back of the iPhone. And if you're using a MagSafe compatible case, it'll do so in the case itself. And all the models will feature water resistance at six meters for up to 30 minutes. Incredible. And across the lineup, a new brighter True Tone flash system. The actual unit does appear to be a little bit larger and new slow motion capability, 4K 120 or 4K 240 frames per second. So that's where the similarities end. Now for the differences. First, materials. Between the 12 mini and 12 and the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max, materials are different. So the bands are surgical grade stainless steel on the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max. And oh boy, the way that they luster, they're so shiny, it looks delicious. The 12 and 12 mini feature an aluminum, aerospace aluminum border, also awesome, but different texture, more rugged. And of course, colors. So one less choice than last year on the iPhone 11 on the 12 series, black, white, green, blue, and a product red. And they all look great. The blue is more reminiscent of that darker navy blue color. I love the choices here. On the 12 Pro series, we have silver, gold, and the gold is a somewhat new finish. Apple applied new processes to get a more shiny gold look. And there's a new graphite color, which replaces space gray, and a new Pacific blue color, which looks like a cross between midnight green and the blue color on the iPhone 12. Now, as for screens, across the lineup, we'll find the new Super Retina XDR organic LED display. So now the 12 and 12 mini have the best in screen tech. Also, the PPI or pixel density is the same across the board. The 12 mini is the sharpest of the bunch with a 476 pixels per inch density. And there's a key difference in screen brightness between the 12 and 12 Pro series. So the iPhone 12 and 12 mini can sustain 625 nits on non HDR content. The 12 Pro can sustain 800 nits. Now, both displays can sustain 1200 nits max brightness when needed. And moving on to the camera. Actually, most of the differences between the devices are happening in the camera section here. So between the 12 and 12 mini and the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max, notably missing is the telephoto zoom lens on the standard 12 series. This is a 2.0 aperture zoom lens, providing two times optical zoom on the 12 Pro. Now on the 12 Pro Max, this lens is even better. It offers a 2.5 times optical zoom because Apple had just a little bit more room to play with the focal length. There's a 65 millimeter focal length on the Max and 52 on the 12 Pro. Now, yes, the 12 Pro Max does get an additional 0.5 times optical zoom, but because of that extra focal length, the aperture is a little bit worse than the standard 12 Pro at 2.2 versus 2.0 on the standard 12 Pro. So because the Pro Series models get the telephoto lens, Apple calls the zoom range four times on the 12 Pro, five times on the 12 Pro Max, and just two times on the 12 and 12 mini because they can zoom out two times. Again, they're missing the telephoto lens. And there is a difference between digital zoom. So the 12 and 12 mini can do five times digital zoom, the 12 Pro can do 10 times, and the 12 Pro Max can do 12 times because of that additional 0.5 times optical zoom. Now what's even more confusing is between the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max, there's a considerable difference in the wide angle lens. 
So the wide angle lens on the 12 Pro Max is larger due to there being more space in the sensor itself. And speaking of, it's much bigger. So this is the wrong layout of it, but it's considerably bigger than the 11 Pro Max sensor. Apple was able to fit in a 47% larger sensor, as a result, larger individual pixels on the sensor, 1.7 micrometer, letting in more light, taking better night mode photos. Now with this larger sensor on the 12 Pro Max, Apple also included a sensor shift image stabilization technology, which means the sensor itself is stabilized in the housing instead of the actual lenses, like on the 12 Pro series. This provides better stabilization for night mode photography, a two second long exposure while holding the 12 Pro Max. Now the 6.1 inch 12 Pro does get dual image stabilization, which means the telephoto and wide angle lens are optically stabilized and the standard 12 mini and 12 series get standard optical image stabilization only on the telephoto lens. And an interesting camera detail on the 12 Pro Max so the top lens is the telephoto zoom lens. On the bottom is wide. On the 12 Pro series, the top lens is swapped. So that's the wide angle on top and telephoto on bottom. Now only the iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max get night mode portraits, otherwise improved deep fusion and night mode across the lineup. And also limited to the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max is a proprietary raw codec. Apple's calling it Apple Pro Raw, which helps you ink even more detail out of your photos for then editing via Apple's editor or third-party applications. And when recording in the new Dolby Vision HDR codec mode, the iPhone 12 and 12 mini are limited to 4K 30 frames per second. The 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max can do up to 60 in 4K. So I think that's an artificial limitation. Shouldn't be there, but come on, you gotta make some differences between the devices. And of course, can't forget the LiDAR scanner. Limited to the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max. This has been taken from the iPad Pro. It allows your iPhone to sense depth. Also helps with autofocus. So in nighttime conditions, autofocus is six times faster thanks to the LiDAR scanner. I don't think it's too big of a deal. I mean, it's gonna help in some AR applications, more accurate AR placement in certain apps. You can map your house. It also helps with night mode portraits but the usage case of just using the sensor is very small. Not a lot of apps utilize it. And quite a difference in battery life. Largest of the bunch, the 12 Pro Max, is capable of up to 20 hours of video playback. The 6.1 inch models go down to 17 hours of playback and the iPhone 12 mini gets 15 hours of playback. So not too bad for the smallest of the bunch. And as for storage, iPhone 12 models start at 64 gigabytes, go up to 128 and max out at 256 iPhone 12 Pro starts at 128, goes up to 256, and maxes out at 512, same as iPhone 11 Pro. And prices are very fair, actually. iPhone 12 mini starts at 699, iPhone 12 starts at 799, but not so fast. This is only on Verizon with a carrier subsidy. If you're getting this on T-Mobile, Sprint, or Unlocked, it'll start at 829 for the iPhone 12 and 729 for the iPhone 12 mini, $30 more. The iPhone 12 Pro series starts at $999 and $1,099 for the 12 Pro Max, in line with the 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max prices. Now, depending on which device you're ordering, the order and receive dates will be different. The 6.1 inch models are happening first, so the 12 and 12 Pro available to order this Friday, the 16th, with a receive date of 23rd. Now, the Mini and 12 Pro Max you can pre-order on November 6th, with a receive date of November 13th. And there it is guys, the iPhone 12 lineup. Actually very happy with this release. It was everything we hoped it would be, awesome camera upgrades, and there's likely to be a lot of smaller things that Apple didn't mention. Uh, only once we receive the devices will we know. I'll make sure to cover all of that. Again, last chance to order phone rebel cases at a discounted rate. Stay tuned for our Gen 2 launch, and uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for official videos. Peace.